Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Cohey, Technical Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing, and welcome to the first episode of Will It Break? That's about all I need to know when it comes to utilizing some of the analysis tools inside of Autodesk Inventor. I simply want to know, will it break before this thing's real, right? Because think about it in the context of how, you know, we used to analyze if things were going to break. We'd build physical prototypes, we'd fire them up, and, you know, hopefully nobody gets hurt in the process. Whoops. <laughs> you know, here's another one. Check out this guy. <laughs> Luckily, I can't believe that person didn't get hit in the head. But nevertheless, obviously, we have technology today that's going to allow us to simulate a lot of the real world environments so that we a we don't have to build this thing first and b <laughs> nobody gets hurt in the process so let's go ahead and create a new simulation here obviously inside of Autodesk Inventor Professional I'm gonna go to the stress analysis environment and I'm simply gonna say I wanna create a new simulation to determine w if it's going to break will it break right so if we take a look at the ribbon bar it's really easy to follow if you just follow things from left to right across the top it basically tells you what to do Now I've got a couple nylon parts in here and I don't really need to use include those in, in the simulation so you just find the parts right click and say ignore during the simulation pretty easy right now the next thing I need to do is figure out where my constraints are where is this thing being supported um, when it's applied in the assembly so pretty easy you know on the left hand side on the right hand side and I'll go ahead and choose OK and then the next thing I need to do is just determine what my forces are. Now there's a couple different ways to apply these forces. Um, obviously we have force, we have pressure, we have some other ways to do it, but really I just want a force applied in a specific direction. So you see I'm going to use the option for use vector components. Um, if any of you have seen Despicable Me, you'll never think of vector the same ever again. My daughter watches it a hundred times every day it seems. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and, and change my vector. Uh, <laughs> direction for these forces um, you know positive is gonna you're gonna flip it around negative is gonna go in the opposite direction but nevertheless I had um, you know 200 newtons going down 200 newtons uh, being applied in that direction and I simply say simulate now you can go in and, and, and control some of the mesh settings and um, you know kind of you make the mesh a little bit tighter if you want but really if, if, if all you're looking to figure out is is will this thing break um, you know, just apply where your fixed constraints are, where your forces are going to be, and hit simulate. Now, it's one thing to be able to, to run the analysis, but you, you know, you have to, it's not going to come up and say, you know, in red breaking lines, hey, this thing's going to break. You have to interpret the results. So if I take a look at this, my von Mises stress says that I have uh, 164.1 uh, megapascals here. Now, what the heck is von Mises stress? Well, let's just look it up real quick see because you know if, if, if this is something you do every single day well von Mises yield criterion all right let's check this out so basically what it what it says is that the yielding of material begins when the second devioric stress invariant reaches a critical k factor all right, all right, whatever that means all right now in materials and engineering the mass yield criterion formulated in terms of von Mises are equivalent basically what I'm looking for here is the material said uh, to be yielding when it reaches its critical point node as yield strength alright so the yield point of material is when it when it g goes beyond its ability to go back to where it was originally it's that easy right so there's a number that uh, that they that they apply to that megapascals right and each material is a little bit different okay so now I'm going to now I'm going to check out and see what the yield strength for steel is so I'll just scroll down to the bottom here and you can find these charts anywhere right so all right so ASTM A36 steel yield strength 250 megapascals all right cool so as long as I don't exceed that guess what it won't break <laughs> you know in 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 the most general sense of of, of the terms here now I, I know I'm gonna get a bunch of people come on and say you know Rob there there are other factors to consider here but when you're in early design phase when you simply want to know whether or not you're going down the right path based upon the stresses that are going to be applied for it I think this is a great way to determine whether or not it's gonna break Okay. So there's a couple other things you, you can go through. Obviously, you can you can check out the the safety factor, uh, the maximum displacement. I mean, those uh, safety factor, and maximum displacement, those are pretty self-explanatory. Um, but I can also go through and say, you know, I'm no expert here when it comes to analysis, and you know, I really want to maybe take that next level of detail 
um, off to a you know structural engineer on staff or maybe somebody that that, that you contract with. Here we'll just be able to uh, uh, create a, a quick report. Now this report you can you can spit it out in uh, in HTML format. You can you can uh, spit it out in uh, rich text like I've done here. So you can put it into a Word document, include it as as part of your you know design analysis. But you know nevertheless it it, it creates all the information in that document for you, um, which I, I think is it, you know becomes pretty handy. And as you can see, you know it takes those little snapshots of the screen so that you can not only just read the report. Um, but be able to visualize what the well, what the setup was and the and, you know the end results and everything like that. So, you know, obviously we ran that quick analysis. We determined that uh, you know based upon this configuration, it's not going to break. And you know, it sure beats the old way of doing things. And you know, <laughs> lighting your ass on fire—that's just not something that's in the cards for me. I don't know about you. Anyway, welcome. Thanks for watching the first episode of Will Break. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and check me out on Twitter. See ya.